Hey everybody, this is Jimmy from This Movie Sucks, the podcast where we watch bad movies so you don't have to. This week on Behind the Bee Movie, we talk about the 1987 movie Dolls. So put on your boy toy belt, grab your favorite ravenous teddy bear, because we are taking a deep dive on this horror classic. Dolls was released May 29th, 1987 by Empire Pictures. It was the third feature film by Stuart Gordon, who had found success with The Reanimator. So Gordon brought back stars Carolyn Purdy Gordon, his wife, and Ian Patrick Williams from The Reanimator to star in it. The trio would be reunited again in 1989's Robot Jocks. The film was actually shot before Gordon's next film, 1986's From Beyond, but released almost a year afterwards due to all the doll effects that were added in post-production. Since they were shot back-to-back, they shared many of the same sets as well. The plot follows a group of travelers who find themselves stranded due to a bad storm. They end up spending the night in a nearby mansion, where they discover the mansion is owned by a couple of elderly doll makers who appear to be more than they seem. The plot really centers around Judy, a child traveling with her disinterested father and seemingly cruel stepmother. During the night, she discovers the dolls the couple makes are alive and have murderous intent. Over the course of the film, it is revealed that the doll makers are actually witches that use their magic to create the avenging dolls. The dolls in the film have various different origins, explaining their ability to come to life. Mr. Punch and the toy soldiers are controlled by witchcraft. Some of the dolls used to be humans that were transformed into dolls to pay for their crimes in life. This explains why some of them have organic skeletons underneath the porcelain. And some of them are also fairies, which explains why their bodies burn in smoke after being whipped with Enid's metal belt. Because according to folklore, fairies have an adverse reaction to metal and iron. The dolls originally were created by the, the Brunners, who are puppeteers that, you know, that were based here in Los Angeles. I always thought John and Vivian Brunner reminded me a little bit of, uh, of the couple that are played by, by Guy Rolfe and Hilary Mason. You know, they're doll makers and puppeteers also. John and Vivian seemed like a very uh, quaint and innocuous and sweet couple, but they would do these deadly things with their, you know, talents. Had I thought that the dolls should look like Victorian porcelain dolls. The reason for this was that um, many years before I shot this film, uh, I went to the University of Wisconsin and there's a big historical society there and on the third floor is this collection of porcelain Victorian dolls. And one time when I was looking at these things, uh, I ended up getting locked in the museum when it closed. So I was stuck, surrounded by hundreds of these dolls, and it really did start to freak me out, because I could swear that their eyes were following me, their heads were moving. So it was very much like the movie. Stuart Gordon at one point was very interested in directing a sequel to the film. The initial storyline following the child protagonist from the first film, Judy, as she travels back to Boston, where she would receive a box sent to her from England and would contain the toy makers Gabrielle and Hillary inside as dolls. Actress Carrie Lorraine, who played Judy, only had one previous film credit before this film, and that was Poltergeist 2 The Other Side in 1986, despite being introduced in this film's opening credits. She was said to have had a horrible experience shooting this film. She was traumatized by the monstrous teddy bear featured in the beginning dream segment of the film, and her fears were made worse as it was made into a joke by crew members who would lurk in the shadows growling at her. It was so bad that the filmmakers made young Carrie watch Bunny Bailey get into makeup for her death scene just to ensure that she understood it was fake. Understandably, after this experience, she retired from acting, having no interest in pursuing it as a career. Instead, she pursued a career as a criminal defense lawyer. In the scene where Judy reads Hansel and Gretel, the book they're reading actually belonged to the children of director Stuart Gordon and his wife Carolyn Purdy Gordon, and they retained it as a memento of the film. The main warlock and doll maker, Gabrielle Hartwick, was played by character actor Guy Rolfe. 
and mainly known for his portrayal of Prince John in Ivanhoe in 1952. However, later in his career, he would find success starring in multiple Puppet Master films as character Andre Tulin, the first Puppet Master and main protagonist of the later half of the series. It's interesting how this role may have influenced his casting for in the Puppet Master series. Guy Rolfe had to bleach his hair white for the film. He wasn't particularly happy when it originally came out yellow. Because Empire Pictures wanted the film to be more like Stuart Gordon's previous film, The Reanimator, additional gore footage was shot for the death of Rosemary. One shot was filmed with a doll used a pitchfork to pull out some of her intestines, though the footage was eventually scrapped when filmmakers decided that the scene just really didn't fit the tone of the rest of the movie. There were so many scenes involving these dolls that... Uh... Uh, you know, it was very, very difficult. I think the hardest scene in the whole movie was the scene where Rosemary is killed by the dolls because this is the first time in the film where we actually see them and there are so many of them. Uh, plus, you know, they're doing all these horrific things to her, you know, with little, their little uh, tools and weapons and things. That scene, I believe, took, I would say, you know, three or four days to shoot. They had a doll that was supposed to saw my foot off and I, w I was surprised because, um, there was, that was a real sharp knife. <laughs> they weren't supposed to press very hard, but I remember there was one point where it was like, hey, wait a minute. This is, you know, this is like a Swiss Army knife you got here. Are you serious? <laughs> and they had a stunt double, a guy stunt double. And I was, I was insulted. <laughs> I thought he looked nothing like me, and, uh, but they were not going to let me do it. What the film lacked in gore, it made up for it with atmospheric horror, most of it taking place in the traditional haunted house-style mansions. The house was constructed inside the soundstage at the Italian studio, formerly owned by Dino De Laurentiis. Inside, it seemed like a real two-story house, where cast and crew members could actually walk from room to room. Outside, these remnants of sets and props from other De Laurentiis productions, including 1968's Barbarella, which inspired some of the dolls featured in the film. The whispering sounds of the dolls were done by a group of Stuart Gordon's friends and family, including his wife and his kids. Carolyn also portrayed the character of Isabella in the attic sequences because actress Bunty Bailey had already been let go by the time the attic sequences were shot. Bunny Bailey is best known for being featured in Norwegian pop group AHA's iconic music video Take On Me in 1985. The fashions worn by Enid and Isabella were inspired by Madonna, who is often photographed sporting the same boy toy belt that Cassie Stewart wears in the film. The close-up shot of Enid grabbing her boy toy belt as she's fighting the dolls was actually Carolyn Purdy Gordon's niece filling in for Cassie Stewart, who is not available for the time of the shoot. The film originated with a poster image of a doll holding its own eyeballs and producer Charles Band's simplistic pitch of a movie about a killer doll. Writer Ed Naha was given total creative freedom, though producer Brian Usna had insisted that the poster art would correlate to a scene in the film. Overall, Dolls is a horror gem that anyone interested in retro horror should watch it. It uses atmospheric horror found in traditional ghost stories and combines it with techniques found in slasher movies of the decade to create an eerie and at times surreal viewing experience. But if you are a fan of the reanimator who are just interested in killer dolls before Chucky, then definitely give this film a viewing. I'm Jimmy with This Movie Sucks, the podcast where we watch bad movies so you don't have to, and I am out of here.